Hey guys, before this one take, I just want to take a minute to talk to you about Autotempest.com. They've been a sponsor for a while, but even before that, we were using them to look through classified ads for cars because it makes searching so much easier than going to each site and typing in the same information over and over and over and over again. When I was looking for 240s and M3s, I got really sick of going to each site and typing in the make and the model and the transmission da -da -da, and hitting enter and going to the next one and the next one. You don't have to do that with Autotempest.com. It's so great. You just go to Autotempest.com, you type in all the information, you hit search, and it brings up all the listings from all the most popular car classified sites to one page. It's great, and I am frankly surprised that more of you don't know it exists. Think of it like one of those bad dating shows where they put all the people in a cabin and they lock the door and they make them fight over roses, okay? In this case, the cars are the people the producers are autotempest.com. They push them all to you, and then you decide which one you're going to marry for a while until like the fame and fortune runs out or reliability becomes an issue or depreciation. This analogy got weird. Auto Tempest lets you find and compare cars from Auto Trader, eBay Motors, and all of Craigslist. Lastly, Auto Tempest is completely free to use, which is why I like it, but they need word of mouth to grow. So if you like it and you know someone is looking for a car, tell them to check it out. It helps them out, it saves them a ton of time, and it's a great resource. Now, enjoy this one take. Morning, everybody. Hope you are having a good one. Um, we're doing, we're going off-roading today because we have a Jeep, and if you're given a Jeep as a press car, you should take it in the dirt because that's what they do very, very well. Don't just take it to a parking lot, and don't just use it to like stunt at the gym. So, take it to a parking lot. Do yeah. people take them to parking lots? Yeah, like grocery store parking lots to show. How up to... dare you go to a parking lot? That's all they do. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I can't about. even. Don't be try here. to crap on my can't. joke right now. Sorry. You know that is absolutely. Sorry. You know I'm absolutely right. People buy Rubicons. <laughs> and then drive them around a uh, concrete jungle and they pretend that they're gonna go off-roading and they don't. So we are gonna take it up a trail that Matt has brought me to that I've never done. Yeah, no, uh, we're on the back of Rauher Flats and um, this Jeep, so this is not the gnarliest off-road Jeep you can buy. No, this isn't a Rubicon, this is a 2019 Limited X. Right, so, so what does got, that mean? It means it has the four-wheel drive system, um, which I'll put in a lower third because they have no joke, six different names for their systems, but this has the selectable terrain modes like snow, sand, rock, auto, and then most of all, it has a uh, four-wheel drive low transfer case. Okay, so we will probably want to be in low and rock for this one. Okay. Although, um, yeah. So we gotta go to neutral for low, um, and if you put it in rock, it only it, it asks you to activate four-wheel low. So if um, oh, ZL1, good for finals. you, sir. Auto park is disabled, so no parallel Thank parking uh, for you on the way up. So this one's got the V6. It's in 20-inch wheels, all-season tires. It's sort of like a middle-of-the-road off-roader. So if you're the gnarliest off-roader, you're not going to want this one. This is like a pretty consumer-grade one. You might do some camping. You might hit a trail. You might want to drive to some waterfall If you live in the snow and it gets yeah. deep or something. Um, so in that vein, it doesn't have the super crazy crazy off-road stuff, so I'm not gonna just try and destroy the truck on a gnarly trail, which I thought about, and then we backed down on. This is... <laughs> Does it look too gnarly? Dude, do you know how big Hang on, let me see. this ditch is? Has it gotten worse since I was last year? We might want to yeah. go somewhere else. <laughs> We would have, if we went up that trail, we would have really broken this thing badly and yeah. possibly gotten stranded. Possibly gotten hurt. Yeah. So uh, let's just go up this trail. This trail climbs about 1,500 feet in about two miles. It's got some uh, some rocks on it. It's got some ruts. It has a lot of exposure. Uh, so you could potentially drive off cliffs uh, if you're not careful. But it's the kind of off-roading that I think a lot of uh, people that aren't the super hardcore could still do. And oh wow, we got to turn parking aids off. That's yeah, that's no bueno. There we go. Park sense off. Park okay. sense off. We don't need that. Lane keeping assist yeah. off. This comes. You're good. Plenty one of the things this limited comes with, uh, in a, you know, in addition to like nicer leather and um, a lot of the black accents on the outside that I'll cut to shots of, is it comes with all of like the driving help, you know, uh, radar cruise control, lane keep assist, which is a really gentle assist. It's not 
like the Volvo will drive you down the highway for five minutes without touching the wheel. This yeah. is a really subtle nudge that will not keep you in the lane. Um, it also comes with a bigger stereo, better headlights, uh, and then as you were saying, they do sell a Grand Cherokee that has like no other offer abilities. The Overland. Isn't that the Overland? We yeah. had one of those at All Cars Go to Heaven, and it was great. Yeah, now now they sell them with optional like Navi tires. It's got the airlift suspension, um, the same. Uh, I believe it's the same four-wheel drive system, but it comes with an LSD in the back. And then if you're real hardcore, you just get a Rubicon. Which, actually, the two-door Rubicon I had was the same price as this truck. It was $49,000. Wow, really? Yeah, for a two-door manual I would Rubicon. much rather have this. Yeah, I, I like these. I think this rides on the road nice. It cornered flat on the way up here. Um, the brakes work well. This is a good trail for this, I think. I think we've chosen chosen wisely. This is pretty much what it's like going the whole way up. Okay. Can I just say that you are much more cautious when off-roading than I am? <laughs> <laughs> I would be a lot more aggressive going up this trail than you're being. I, I like thought it. I had a lot of mechanical sympathy, but it seems that you have much more than me. I think you have more. You have more mechanical sympathy on the road yeah. than I do, and I have uh, more of it off-road. Yeah. Almost every it. time I go off-road, I break some. Not break. Break is the wrong word. Almost every time I go off-road, I either scratch, chunk a wheel, something. Uh, I have not done any of that in my off-roading press car history. Well, that's why. However, you are better than me. Um, I know that I am a bit timid, especially when I had that that Wrangler, just because you know I'm pretty pretty new to like actual rock crawling. Yeah. The stuff we were headed to earlier, and we backed down from. Yeah. Like I don't know what the maximum yaw is, or sorry, pitch or roll. Of which, we, have, we have the gauges. We have the gauges. We can look at what, yeah. the, what our maximum pitch or roll are. I do like they have. They're very good at mapping the trails that you go on. Like when I yeah. when I climbed Big Bear, you could zoom in and it had all the forest roads on there. This I saw the this trail and other trails in this area yeah. are on this they, one. As they well. do a real good job of I mean, you know, they know their market and they, they give you things that would support that. I if I recall when we did the backcountry discovery route in All Cars Go to Heaven One with the Jeep Overland, that trail was on the Jeep Nav. Yeah, and we used it a lot. And we used it. Because our maps we uh we almost got lost a few we times. We used it to check out, check our work quite a few times. And that was, what, 2013? That yeah. was a while ago. And now things have gotten even more detailed and better. Yeah. Um, you could definitely do this in four-wheel high, I imagine. You probably could. Wow. A little rock slide. That's great. You probably could do this one in high. I, 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 put it, I said to put it in low. I don't know why. It's probably nicer to the engine, though, and probably nicer to... Uh, uh, what's it called? Transmission, because it's not going to be revved up as much. Let's see how our accessory gauges look. Temps are normal. <laughs> you got, I got, I got coolant temp, oil temp, battery voltage, trans temp, and oil pressure. This is like a transition scene in a submarine movie. It's like, how are, how are the gauges, Captain? You're like, yeah, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. Um, so, the I think this thing is, uh, so far is doing well. I mean, not. Not that we're doing major rock crawling, but also we're not doing major rock crawling, but this, this Jeep doesn't have the adjustable height suspension, so it's in a fixed ride height. It's on 20 inch wheels with big side with all season tires. So I'm not sure I would be comfortable because I think you get at least two or three inches more clearance with the air suspension uh -huh. going up from this. So like, I'm not sure how much rock crawling you're actually going to want to do at this level. I mean, you could, but you might break some. I mean, I'm sure, you know, if someone, this is a better daily than, than a Wrangler, even though the new Wranglers have gotten a lot better. Like, the new longer wheelbase is a lot better. But if, if you want to, like, be an occasional rock crawler, and you're probably more experienced than we are, you could get the adjustable suspension, yeah. put some KO2s on it, and then you'd have a something that is more more comfortable on the highway and driving you, around yeah. and then could handle stuff occasionally. I un understand the new Wrangler is an improvement and I do think Wranglers look cool and I like the idea of a Wrangler and what a Wrangler represents, but I just rented, it was granted it was a last gen, but it had a hard top on it and it was a, it was a four door. I rented one for a few days in South Carolina when you needed an extra car mm -hmm. and I did 
multiple like hundred mile highway commute highway drives in it, and it was miserable. Yeah, it was loud. It wasn't insulated. The wind blows it all over. Like for for an equip, not the same, but for a similar amount of money, if you do highway driving. This, this is what you want. You don't really want a Wrangler if you're doing highway driving. No, this this cruise on the highway really nice. Uh, it, it soaks up, it soaks up like the large transitions on the 405 fine, the little cracks in the road you do here through the chassis and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, I think these in a, in a nice trim level can get you a lot of the way towards like a Land Rover yeah. or a Range or something without, with, and they cost half or a third. Yeah, like I use this trail to uh, to test uh, the Land Cruiser mm -hmm. last week, or the Lexus version of the Land Cruiser. And granted, uh, I went up a much more difficult section also, but it was, you know, this, this is doing this part. Like if you're going camping or you're going to a lot of slight off-road destinations or the kind of de off-roading that recreational people do, like this is what it looks like. Yeah, much. that's very true. You wouldn't take this to the uh, like the rock practice area. Also, or this trail was noticeably smoother on the way down than on the way up. Like, actually, it's weird how the same trail, when you go up it, can can come off as rougher than, than if you go down it. Well, some of these these rocks, although they're small, are pretty much vertical face. Yeah. So we're climbing up like a three to five inch, you know, tiny little miniature cliff. But if you're dropping down that, especially if the suspension in that Lexus soaks up uh, bumps really well. I also think, I think the Grand Cherokee, for the most part, is the best built vehicle that the FCA makes, except maybe the Ram. But I found some brutal orange peel on the paint <laughs> yep. on the front of this thing. And it's got 1,300 miles on it. So either it came with that awful orange peel from the factory or someone has already smashed it and it's been and cheaply it repainted. But, by somebody. But that somebody didn't do a good job. Uh, but all, that's, all that stuff I hear about how all the press cars are specially prepped, occasionally we find some that just aren't. Well, I've, I've also had a Mercedes press car that had orange peel in the paint, so that was not specially painted or prepped in any way yeah. either. I think, I think auto manufacturers are just, they've learned a long time ago that they can go cheaper on painting and no one notices when the car's really clean and they're excited to drive it. Yeah. I, I think that paint is just has more orange peel. Right here. Wow, it's quite you, a bush. This is where you scratch this side of the car. Being very careful. I'm pretty sure that bush put a scratch on the side of the Lexus <laughs> on the way down. I think this is also the right size for an SUV. I think I think these are very good looking. I think they're the best. I think they're the best looking in this class compared to like Forerunner Pilot this class? or um, oh, Forerunner or like Highlander. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just think yeah. they've all gotten a little like the Pilot and Highlander are like the minivans that are crossovers and have yeah. all-wheel drive. And they're priced in a, in a similar point, but this gets a truer four-wheel drive. Um, those are also longer vehicles, but this actually has a longer wheelbase than the Pilot, so it should feel more Does comfortable. Is it really? Yeah. Those have three-row seating. I thought seating. the Pilot was was pretty nice when I drove the Pilot. I, I thought, I mean, it wasn't my taste, but I thought it was pretty nice. I think this is a little cushier. It has more, and Uconnect is better than Honda's system. Yeah. I don't love Honda's system. I think I think Uconnect is very good. Um, the Hondas do give you, one, their reputation for reliability. Two, three-row seating is an option. Um, they also have way more storage capacity in yeah. the back seats up or down than this does. I'm impressed at the uh, lack of any rattles. No, it feels very like, solid. It sounds really solid. There's not, the, it's really, uh, for the, the base engine, you know, for a, a more basic Grand Cherokee, this thing is pretty nicely quiet, refined. There's some hard plastics I don't love. Go up this way. And we'll go, and we'll that go. just, yeah, it just goes right there. Yeah, go ahead. Enjoy yourself. You gotta do something a little, a little steeper than that. I mean, this is making real easy we're, work. Oh, we're in mud. We're not in rock. Now oh, we're in rock. We're in four, we're in four low. Yeah, I don't know uh, mud and rock. I mean, it, just, it just cruised up that stuff. Yeah, easy. Nope. Now you're gonna just do it down there. Oh, now we're definitely in the lower, uh, lower gear. So oh, a for huge, rock, yeah, rock mud. You want to go back to mud? Yeah, we should go back to mud. Okay, mud it is. Interesting. Yeah. It still shows four low, but uh, that is a giant hole in the ground. That's a big hole. Yeah. Wow. Trying to drive there. 
Oh, yeah. That's a, <laughs> that's a big hole off to the right. Jeez. That is like a funnel. place the wheels on this car. Uh, it is big, but it doesn't feel so gigantic. Like I knew where the right edge of the of the car was, I knew where the right tire was, I can hug the grass and that way I can protect the paint and not damage the vehicle like uh like Matt would. Alright Matt's walking up to get another drive-by so I just want to go over some specs with you guys because this is uh, this is the homework. So the Jeep Limited comes uh, standard at forty thousand nine hundred dollars, and then this comes with the optional equipment. The customer for per customer preferred package, two BG is five thousand dollars, and that gets you the wheels, the gloss black exterior accents, um, black roof rails, titanium. Uh, they call it titanium accents for the badging, um, body colored sills, body colored fascia, uh, xenon lights, steering wheel mounted shift levers, premium LED fogs. Those are good. Uh, LED running tail lamps, Pirelli tires, you get the Limited X badge, the Sport Hood, which does look cool. It's kind of like the one they give on the Hellcat, Hellcat. Um, and performance tires. So it's mostly an appearance package. And then for $1,500, we get the Advanced Safety Group, which has stuff like lane keep assist, parking assist, um, radar cruise control, and uh, the parking proximity sensors. Actually, no, the parking proximity sensors are standard. So you could get this car, you could get the hardware of this, you know, you could get the eight inch screen, the four wheel drive system, the engine, all that stuff you could get for $40,000. And then it just depends on what you want it to look like. $5,000 for an appearance package. Okay, it seems like a lot of money. I will say that the list of changes on that package are numerous. Uh, it was a really, it was like a paragraph. So they change a lot of stuff. So if you're looking at this truck and you're going, wow, that's a good looking truck. You know, I, I think it is. I think the color is great and I think the accents are good. Well, there's a reason that it looks that way. They change a lot of things compared to what it looks like in standard form, but looks are subjective. So uh, if you like the way the $40,000 car looks, and if you don't need the radar cruise control, which I think is the best invention in cars in the last 10 years, you could get a Grand Cherokee with this four wheel drive system with this engine for $40,000. I'm, I'm a fan of Jeep. I'm a big fan. Alright, so how far up does this trail go? Like a mile? Yeah, it's like a mile and a half. I mean, it runs all the way over the mountain, but yeah, until can... we get to the peak, it's probably... Yeah, a mile and a half total. So how long ago was it when you came down the gnarly trail in the Discovery? Like the very year, gnarly one, like a year, like a year, year ago. Okay. Yeah, it was far. It was I a think, long time. I think the recent rains have removed all of the mud. <laughs> and now it's just it's just it was just sheer rocks. rocks. Yeah, that was that was intense. Yeah, right. like the, the 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 peak is pretty much right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. As I was as I was outside of the car. Looking you, looking at you drive by to get to these drive by shots. Yes, I noticed that when you dip a wheel into some of the deeper ravines here, yeah, you're a, approaching the ground clearance limit of the car. In the like, in the middle or like the like in the departure? no in the middle no not wow. the departure angles in the middle like you're not you're not maxing it out you're not bottoming out, but you're getting pretty close to the clearance limit of this thing. Okay, that's so good to know and that. I guess that's the difference between this and like the Overland. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it's three or four inches more uh, uh, height or exactly what the, the number is, but it's significant enough yeah. that, that if you, I think if you really want to do rock crawling, you're gonna want that suspension. This, this, for your basic trails, dirt roads, snow, you know, mud, your basic stuff. This is a pretty good package, though. And I think you, I'd be wary about buying more than I needed. I don't think I'd personally buy the, the Beastie Overland just to have it because this is a this is very capable. I think it's, it's capable, it's good looking, it's quiet on the highway. You could tow... 
With the V6, you can tow like 6,200 pounds with this. That's pretty um, good. You can tow a race car. Yeah, and that's that's higher than uh, like the toy, uh, the Highlander or the Pilot R. And if you get the V8, you can tow like 7,000 pounds yeah. or something like that. So I don't know. I think track hawk. they do a good job. Well, yeah, track hawk. They, they do a good job of knowing like, you know, their, their market's not carrying nine kids. Like if you're carrying nine kids, get a minivan. Go up there. That's the top. Oh, all right. Well, we'll go to the top. Go to the top. I mean, this thing's definitely just cruising. It, it's, it's not a very difficult trail, but um, it's good to know that we're near the limit of ground clearance. Yeah, not hitting it. I don't think we're near the limit of engine or or powertrain, no. but at a certain point, you just run out of ground clearance. Yeah. And without the uh, height adjustable suspension, the ground clearance is more reasonable. And we're not even in the lowest uh, lowest gearing of four low. When you switched to rock, it was much slower. So this could. Well, I think this might not lot. use first. It just goes to two. In the mud. It just goes to two. Okay. I didn't put it in manual mode for you. And look, if you look across the side, there's the Rauer flats down on the other side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Indeed. That's the top. All right. So this is the top. Grand Cherokee. Grand Cherokee. Ken Clyde. Does the things you'd think a Grand Cherokee can do. Uh, I don't know. I'd rather spend forty nine grand on this than forty nine grand on a Wrangler any day. I agree. And if you if five thousand dollars of this price is just the like appearance package plus better lights and fog lights. So if you like the way it looks without all the black trim yeah, and stuff, yeah. like I think it looks really good. Yeah. But if you don't need that, you could save five grand. Which yeah. Is quite a significant amount of money. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get the get the Wrangler if you need a Wrangler. Otherwise, this is more comfortable in every way. Yeah. And better on the highway and better in the wind and etc. Yeah. etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's got nice stuff. stuff. It's nice comfy. stuff. Yeah. Good truck. All, All right. right. There it is. There it is. Uh, oh, steering field does not come on this model though. By the way. <laughs> it's okay. It doesn't come on the track hawk either. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Check out the podcast. Buy the shirts. All the things. And we will see you later. Bye.